What's up guys? I'm Sana and I did a ring on. It's wrong. Take two. I'm Sana and welcome to my channel. So I'm doing something new on here and trying something a little different, stepping out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to be bringing you a little weekly devotional. I have got some awesome topics lined up which I am super excited about. There is a lot going on in the world right now, so I would love to be a happy little space to bring you a midweek encouragement. So let's get started. Today we are looking at joy in the storm. So a few weeks ago, God showed me this picture of myself looking out to sea and the craziest storm rolled in. The waves were huge and the people that were just chilling on the beach and bathing in the sea were mad that the weather changed and just wanted to leave. The storm rolled in and all they wanted to do was to get up and get out of the storm. But in the picture, I saw a group of people looking out at the storm and big smiles filled their faces. They saw an exciting opportunity, grabbed their surfboards and went to ride the storm. But this made me think, how often in trials or tough times or whatever the situation is, do we just wish for it to be over? Do we try to leave and to get out of the storm? But actually, storms aren't always bad. They for sure can feel it. But in storms, we get to receive God's joy and it is an opportunity for Him to mature and grow us. You know, in the Bible it says, in His presence there is fullness of joy. I wanted to read a couple of verses. So Psalm 1611 says, You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. You know, at the beginning of Psalm 16, David was saying like, Keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. David wrote most of his Psalms in the middle of storms of life, but he knew the fullness of joy that God's presence holds. John 15, 11 says, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. And Romans 15, 13 says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, there is a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is an emotion that is dependent on circumstances, which in a split second can be switched off. But joy is deeper than emotions. Joy is dependent on God, and we don't manufacture joy like we can with happiness. It's deeper. Joy is contentment despite circumstances. Rick Warren adds his own definition on this. He says, Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life, the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right, and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. I love how he says the quiet confidence because that just indicates nearness and intimacy. And you know, we get to experience joy in the middle of the wildest storms. Paul, the writer of many New Testament books, inspires me so much because his life was a life of storms. Like, man, what that guy went through. Yet, Philippians, for example, is seen as like a happy book, but Paul wrote it while he was under arrest. Philippians 4, 4 to 7 says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Your circumstance does not determine your joy. Joy doesn't come from possessions or success or relationships. Like, I have met the saddest millionaires and the most joy-filled street children. You know, we can't let joy be rooted in our circumstance because when a storm comes, our joy is robbed. Our joy has to be rooted in Jesus. And you know, we need to fight for that joy as we pursue his presence. Joy is the reason that Many Christians over the years have given their lives for the gospel. Joy is the reason that Jesus could go to the cross. 
It says in Hebrews 12, 1 to 3, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people, then you won't become weary and give up. Joy is the reason that Jesus could go to the cross. Like, wow, joy is found in Jesus and he deserves all of our praise and our honor and our worship. And I know that some days that is easier to say and harder to do. And I know for me, like, I love the Bible, but some days when I'm feeling low or overwhelmed or whatever I'm feeling, like in the midst of a storm, I don't necessarily want to sit and read my Bible and pray and rejoice, but I know that it is good for me. I know that it is life-giving and I always feel so much better when I am plugged into Jesus, when I am praising him and when he is the source of my joy. You will never regret spending time with Jesus. And no matter how big the storms of life become, we can receive joy, but we have a choice. A few weeks back, it was absolutely chucking it down with rain and my dad was popping into town and he was getting out of the car and getting absolutely soaked. And he told me that in that moment, he thought, you know, I could get mad about this situation and how wet I'm getting, or I could just enjoy it and splash in the rain. And he said that he went running through the rain, jumping in all the puddles, getting absolutely soaked, but he so enjoyed it. You know, we have a choice and actually choosing joy in a storm is what grows us and matures us. And like, I want to have a passion to grow. I want to be someone who is committed to growth in my life. And I know that it is up to me to make a choice to mature as a believer. I have had a super hard week this week and because of that I almost put off starting these devotionals and I know that for so many people, if not everyone, there are huge storms going on all around us and all around the world. Like. It has been a stormy time in the world recently, but through these storms, we get to find joy in Jesus. And situations like these, the storms of life that are testing, are where we get to grow. And we can measure this growth by our response, like asking ourselves, is there more joy in my life? Or what was, the f what was my first response to that storm? Was it joy or was it a reaction? And the goal isn't like, are we there now, but are we heading there? Like, I want to get to a place that when a storm comes up, I don't even wobble because I am so close to the Father's heart and so plugged into his joy. And these seasons are where our roots grow deeper. These seasons grow us and also show us how far we've come. My prayer is that my first response in storms would be thankfulness and praise and worship and rejoicing him and letting his joy be my foundation. Like that picture that I shared at the beginning, when that storm rolled in and the surface faces were filled with joy, like I wanna be like that. I wanna see a storm and see the opportunity to grow and mature and experience God's deep joy for me. So for anyone in the midst of a storm right now, I really pray that you would just be filled with such a deep joy today and for the rest of this week. So that is what I have got for you today. Tune in next Wednesday for another weekly devotional. I've put a little prayer in the bio, so check it out. I hope you have a lovely day and see you next week. Bye.